Hello, it has been some time. I had foundation repairs done to my house this week. Um, so I have not recorded since last Sunday, which was the 11th. Um, well, I recorded yesterday, but I recorded audiobook yesterday. So today I am actually getting... Luckily, I had enough of a backlog because the house ended up taking, um, they had said it was going to take probably two days. It might take three days. It ended up taking four days. And then yesterday was grocery day, and I do not um, record on grocery day because usually I record in the morning and I go get groceries in the morning. Anyways, it just doesn't work out. Um, but yeah, so this is my first day back recording. I'm so glad I recorded last Sunday. I typically try not to record on Sundays, but last week I was like, oh, what if, because I had enough episodes to get through Friday, I'm like, what if I can't record until next weekend? And that's what ended up happening. So, um, yeah, so now we're back at it. I'm going to start doing something fun. Um, starting in a couple days, I got to get it ready first. Um, I got to basically rebuild my website. So that's going to be fun. Um, and today we are, we, my husband mostly, he wants to, we had to completely empty our garage last weekend so that they could do some of the repair work in the garage. So right now there's a bunch of garage stuff inside my house, but he wants to organize it. So he's going to have to do that himself, but um, I'm like, I can help move things that need help, but my husband's a really strong dude. So like, he probably ain't gonna need help. Anyways, let's get to this. We're doing chapter, We're starting with 26. I think I have like four chapters in the thing that I was going to do last weekend and didn't get done. <clears throat> oh, let me get the character voice file front and center. There we go. Start. Chapter 26, uh, clicky, I made a click. Swallow. Chapter 26, enter Christine. The girls at Patty's place were dressing for the reception which the juniors were giving for the seniors in February. Anne surveyed herself in the mirror of the blue room with girlish satisfaction. She had a particularly pretty gown on. Originally, it had been only a simple slip of cream silk with a chiffon overdress, but Phil had insisted on taking it home with her in the Christmas holidays and embroidering tiny rosebuds all over the chiffon. Phil's fingers were deft, and the result was a dress which was the envy of every Redmond girl. Even Allie Boone, whose frocks came from Paris, was wont to look with longing eyes on that rosebud concoction as Anne trailed up the main staircase at Redmond auction as Anne trailed up the main staircase at Redmond in it. Anne was trying the effect of a white orchid in her hair. Roy Gardner had sent her white orchids for the reception, and she knew no other Redmond girl would have them that night when Phil came in with admiring gaze. Phil. For the time, Pardon. I wished I had... Um. Who was that voice? It just says sample. It stayed home. For the time I wished I had stayed. Oh, this is uh what did what was the dude's name? Roy Gardner. Somehow forgot his name. That's not good. Gaze. Anne, this is certainly your night for looking handsome. Nine nights out of ten, I can easily outshine you. The tenth, you blossom out suddenly into something that eclipses me altogether. How do you manage it? It's the dress, dear. Fine feathers. Tisn't. The last evening you flamed out into beauty, you wear your old bloat. Blah. The last evening. Tisn't. The last evening you flamed out into beauty, you wore your old blue flannel shirt waist that Mrs. Lynde made you. If Roy hadn't already lost head and heart about you, he certainly would tonight. But I don't like orchids on you, Anne. 
No, it isn't jealousy. Orchids don't seem to belong to you. They're too exotic, too tropical, too insolent. Don't put them in your hair anyway. Well, I won't. I admit I'm not fond of orchids myself. I don't think they're related to me. Roy doesn't often send them. He knows I like flowers I can live with. Orchids are only things you can... I can live with. Orchids are only things you can visit with. Jonas sent me some dear pink rosebuds for the evening, but he isn't coming himself. He said he had to lead a prayer meeting in the slums. I don't believe he wanted to come. And I'm horribly afraid Jonas doesn't really care anything about me. And I'm trying to decide whether I'll pine away and die or go on and get my BA and be sensible and useful. You couldn't possibly be sensible and useful, Phil, so you better pine away and die, said Anne cruelly. Heartless, Anne! Silly Phil, you know quite well that Jonas loves you, but he won't tell me so, and I can't make him. He looks it, I'll admit, but speak to me only with thine eyes isn't a really reliable reason for embroidering doilies and hemstitching tablecloths. I don't want to begin such work until I'm really engaged. It would be tempting fate. Mr. Blake is afraid to ask you to marry him, Phil. He's poor and can't offer you a home such as you've always had. You know, that is the only reason he hasn't spoken long ago. I suppose so, agreed Phil dolefully. Well, brightening up, if he won't ask me to marry him, I'll ask him, that's all. So it's bound to come right. I won't worry. By the way, Gilbert Blythe is going about constantly with Christine Stewart. Did you know? Anne was trying to fasten a little gold chain about her throat. She suddenly found the clasp difficult to manage. What was the matter with it? Or with her fingers? No, she said carelessly. Who is Christine Stewart? Ronald Stewart's sister. She's in Kingsport this winter studying music. I haven't seen her, but they say she's very pretty and that Gilbert is quite crazy over her. How angry I was when you refused, Gilbert, Anne. But Roy Gardner was foreordained for you. I can see that now. You were right after all. Anne did not blush, as she usually did when the girls assumed that her eventual marriage to Roy Gardner was a settled thing. All at once, she felt rather dull. Phil's chatter seemed trivial and the reception a bore. She boxed poor Rusty's ears. Get off that cushion instantly, you cat, you! Why don't you stay down where you belong? You belong. Anne picked up her orchids and went downstairs, where Aunt Jamesina was presiding over a row of coats hung before the fire to warm. Roy Gardner was waiting for Anne and teasing the Sarah cat while he waited. The Sarah cat did not approve of him. She always turned her back on him, but everybody else at Patty's place liked him very much. Aunt Jamesina, carried away by his unfailing and deferential courtesy, and the pleading tones of his delightful voice, declared he was the nicest young man she ever knew, and that Anne was a very fortunate girl. Such remarks made Anne restive. Roy's wooing had certainly been as romantic as girlish heart could desire, but... She wished Aunt Jamesina and the girls would not take things so for granted. When Roy murmured a poetical compliment as he helped her on with her coat, she did not blush and thrill as usual, and he found her rather silent on their brief walk to Redmond. He thought she looked a little pale when she came out of the co-ed's dressing room, but as they entered the reception room, her color and sparkle suddenly returned to her. She turned to Roy with her gayest expression. He smiled back at her with what Phil called his deep black velvety smile. Yet she really did not see Roy at all. She was acutely conscious that Gilbert was standing under the palms just across the room, talking to a girl who must be Christine Stewart. She was very handsome and all the st handsome in a stately style destined to become rather massive in middle life. A tall girl with large dark blue eyes, ivory outlines, and a gloss of darkness on her smooth hair. She looks just as I've always wanted to look, thought Anne miserably. Rose leaf complexion, starry violet eyes, raven hair. Yes, she has them all. It's a wonder her name isn't Cordelia Fitzgerald into the bargain. But I don't believe her figure is as good as mine, and her nose certainly isn't. 
Anne felt a little comforted by this conclusion. That's the end of that one. Thanks, guys.